Welcome to your Algebra 2 lesson over 5.6 and 5.7. There's lots of overlap between these two sections. And so we um, have kind of really focused in on what's important in both of them and turned them into one lesson. Now, last lesson in 5.5, we um, learned about synthetic division, which was very similar to synthetic substitution, which we learned about previously. And we also learned that when you divide a polynomial by a factor and you get a remainder of zero, that means the number involved was a zero and the factor involved was indeed truly a factor. Um, if you have any questions about any of those concepts, you need to go back to the 5.5 video or come in and get help to understand that before this video is going to make a whole lot of sense because we're going to assume that you understand um, synthetic division and the relationship between zeros and factors. Okay, so because we know that zeros of polynomials are going to result in a remainder of zero whenever you do synthetic division, one of the things we're able to do is find all the real zeros of a polynomial function. Now, how do we know where to even start? There's an infinite number of numbers, and um, luckily we have a way of um, getting down to a manageable number of potential rational zeros if a polynomial function has integer coefficients, so we always want to stop and make sure we've got integer coefficients, if not we need to fix that, then every rational zero of f has the following form. It's going to be p over q where p is a factor of the constant term, the last term, and q is a factor of the first term, the leading coefficient. So it's last over first, okay? And it's any factor of those two terms, not just the terms themselves. So we're going to practice that. We're going to list all possible rational zeros. Now all these numbers won't be zeros, but they're the possible ones. So let's do that. We've got f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 11x plus 6. So we start by finding our p's, which are the factors of the constant term here, the last term. And so factors of 6 are plus or minus 1, which would be paired with plus or minus 6, because 1 times 6 is 6. Um, plus or minus 2, which is paired with plus or minus 3, because 2 times 3 is 6. 4 doesn't work, 5 doesn't work, and then of course we get to 6, and then anything larger than that doesn't need to be considered. Now, our leading coefficient is just 1, so our only integer factors of that leading coefficient are plus or minus 1. P over Q, you're going to match every value of P with every value of Q. Here it's not all that interesting because our only values for Q are plus or minus 1. So plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2 divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 1, plus or minus 6 divided by plus or minus 1. Notice we only write 1 plus or minus here by each term. And in fact, if you want to just write it one time out at the very beginning, if you remember it applies to all of them, that's fine. Um, we can only end up with quotients that are either positive or negative. So even though we're looking at all combinations of, say, plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 1, we only need to write the plus or minus one time there. Okay, so we simplify that to get our list of possible rational zeros. All of these numbers divided by 1 or just those numbers themselves. So we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. All right, here we've got a little bit more interesting because our value for p is uh, negative 10, or our uh, last term is negative 10, and then our value for q, though, is 4. So we're going to, uh, our value for generating our q values is 4, and so we're going to have quite a few um, possibilities there. So our factors for negative 10 are plus or minus 1, which would match up with plus or minus 10, plus or minus 2, which matches up with plus or minus 5. 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, we already have 5. 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't work, 8 doesn't work, 9 doesn't work, and then 10 works, plus or minus 10. And once we get to that, we can quit looking at values. So we're going to start over again with looking at 4. 
So plus or minus one always works. Um, plus or minus two works because two times two is four. Negative two times negative two is four. Three doesn't work. And then four works back with the one. So plus or minus four. So now when we do our P over Qs, we're going to take each of these values of P and we're going to divide them by each value of Q. So my suggestion is that you take all your values of P and you match them up with the first value of Q. So we had plus or minus 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 5 over 1, 10 over 1. Then we come back with 2. Plus or minus 1 over 2, 2 over 2, 5 over 2, 10 over 2. And then we come back and do plus or minus 1 over 4, 2 over 4, 5 over 4, 10 over 4. And then we clean them up. And if we have any repeats, we discard them. Okay? So here we're going to have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10. And then we get to plus or minus a half. That's new. Uh, this one would give us plus or minus 1. We already have that, so we don't write it again. Plus or minus 5 halves. That's new, so we write that down plus or minus 10 over 2, that's going to give us plus or minus 5. Since we already have that written down, we don't write it down again. Um, plus or minus 1 fourth, that's new. Plus or minus 2 fourths reduces to plus or minus 1 half. We already have that written down, so we don't write that down again. And then plus or minus 5 fourths, that's new, so we write it down. Uh, plus or minus 10 fourths reduces to plus or minus 5 halves. We already have that written down, so we don't write that down again. Okay, so um, if there is a rational zero for this polynomial function, then one of these values or more have to be them. Okay, they can't be something else. Uh, so plus or minus six would not work. Plus or minus two thirds would not work. Any rational value that's not listed among these is even a candidate. All right, so what do we do once we have the candidates? Well, let's look. We're going to find the zeros of f of x equals x cubed minus 8x squared plus 11x plus 20. So the first thing we're going to do is find those possible rational zeros going through that same process that we just did where we list out our p's and then we list out our q's um, using that same process so that we end up with p over q's of 1 over 1, well, plus or minus 1 over 1, plus, uh, 2 over 1, 4 over 1, 5 over 1, 10 over 1, and 20 over 1. So just plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and so on. All right, so all of these values are going to be values that we are going to use synthetic division, and we're going to test these to see if, if they give us zeros for our original function. All right, so we start off with 1. So we put 1 here, that's our, our test number, and then we use our coefficients from our polynomial. So 1, negative 8, 11, and 20. We do synthetic division with it, so we bring down the 1, 1 times 1 is 1, add to negative 8 to get negative 7, and so on. But we end up with a remainder of 24. So what that tells us is that 1 is not a 0 of that polynomial, and x minus 1 is not a factor. So we just go to our next value on the list, so negative 1. When we um, test with negative 1, so here we have our same coefficients, we go through the same process, we do end up with 0 right here, okay? And so we know negative 1 is a 0, so we have one of our answers. We also know something else really cool. We know that x minus negative 1 times 1x squared minus 9x plus 20 is um, the, an equivalent to our original polynomial. The cool thing about that is this is the x minus negative 1, so we get x plus 1. We can factor any, yeah, we can factor trinomials. If it can't be factored, we can always set it equal to 0 and find any irrational or imaginary zeros that go with it by using quadratic formula. Okay, since we can factor this one. Okay, numbers that multiply to be 20 and add to be negative 9 or negative 4, negative 5. That makes it super duper easy to find our other um, uh, zeros. So if you want, you can go ahead and confirm that negative 1 works by doing x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0 then, and x minus 5 equals 0, and you get x equals negative 1, 4, and 5. So those are our three zeros for our polynomial.
All right, so let's look at one where we have a leading coefficient that's not one so that our p over q's are a little bit long, uh, longer list. So our list of p over q's is plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and then plus or minus one half and plus or minus three halves. All right, so we start with one and we do synthetic division. Our, here's our original polynomial. It's got coefficients of two, three, negative two, negative three. So that's where these numbers come from. We do synthetic division um, just like we've been doing. And yay, we get a zero right there. That makes us happy. So that means one is a zero. All right. So if we use the zero product property to find the remaining zeros um, by factoring out the binomial, so we have x minus 1 times 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Where did we get the 2, 5, and 3? Let's go back and look right here. Okay, 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 is the quotient after we divide out x minus 1. And so we set each of those factors equal to 0. We already know that x um, minus 1 equals 0 works, so we don't really have to go to the trouble of uh, setting that equal to 0 because we already have 1. So 2x plus 3 equals 0. We get we subtract the 3 over and divide by 2 to get x equals negative 3 halves. Here we subtract the negative 1 over and so we get um, a final list of our zeros. We got 1 from our synthetic division. We could also reaffirm it by doing x minus 1 equals 0 and getting x equals 1. We get negative 1 and negative 3 halves by factoring our trinomial. Okay. Again, if we can't factor the trinomial, then that means we need to use quadratic formula. All right, let's go on to 5.7. Um, just a little background. The equation x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x plus 48 equals 0 becomes x plus 3 times x minus 4 squared equals 0 when factored. It has two distinct solutions, which are zeros. Remember, solutions and zeros are the same thing. Roots, another word. Um, we can find those if we set each of these factors equal to zero and we solve. We get negative 3 from the x plus 3 and 4 from the x minus 4. Because the x minus 4 occurs twice, that's why it's squared right there, 4 is considered a repeated solution. Specifically, it is called a double solution. So 4 counted, is counted twice, and so the third degree polynomial that we have right here, see it's third degree, has three solutions. This can be generalized into the fundamental theorem of, of algebra, which um, was established by Carl Gauss. So, if a polynomial of degree n um, ha exists, um, then there's at least one solution in the set of complex numbers. Even further than that, um, if the degree is n, then there are exactly n solutions provided that um, solutions are, that are come from two matching factors are counted twice, and ones that come from three matching factors is counted three times and so on. So how many solutions does the equation x cubed plus 5x squared plus 4x plus 20 equals 0 have? Well, that's going to be 3, okay? They happen to be negative 5, negative 2i, and positive 2i. How many zeros does the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared minus 27 have? Well, that's going to be 4. All right, and it happened, they happen to be negative 1, 3, 3, and 3. So 3 is a triple 0. Kind of cool. All right, so we're going to find the zeros of this polynomial function. We have um, f of x equals x to the fifth minus 4x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 10x squared minus 13x minus 14. Now remember, from 5.6, we are going to do the rational root zero uh, theorem. And we're going to find enough zeros that eventually we're going to get down to a quadratic so that we can factor that or um, we can either factor the quadratic or if we need to, we can use quadratic formula. Okay, so uh, we got to do our P over Q's. So we um, start with the P's. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, plus or minus 14. Q, we have an, a coefficient there of 1. So our only Q's are plus or minus 1. So when it's all said and done, 
our p over q list becomes plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, and plus or minus 14. Now, if we start with 1, it fails, so let's just go ahead and skip to negative 1 uh, for the sake of time. So when we test x equals negative 1, now just to, for completeness sake, when you are going through and working this, you probably would try 1. You're going to get some remainder other than 0. You just keep track of the fact that 1 did not work and go on to negative 1. So here we have all of these coefficients. If you look, they just match up right back up here with our polynomial. And we test negative 1. We do our lovely synthetic division. And we end up with a remainder of 0. So yay, negative 1 works. Now, here's the thing. We don't want to go back and try our p over q's with our original polynomial because um, right now we've just reduced down to a with a, a quotient that's a fourth degree polynomial we're trying to get a second to a second degree polynomial so we already know that x minus negative one or x plus one factors out and we're left with x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 9x squared plus 1x minus 14 as our quotient so we want to do the next um, step with this uh, polynomial. Okay, so if you look, I take these numbers and they become my next set of coefficients here. You always try the value that you just worked with to see if it's a double zero. Um, if it is, awesome. If you end up with any zero other than that, um, any number other than zero, you just go on to your next value in your p over q list. So when we try x equals negative 1 with our quotient, um, with 1, negative 5, 9, 1, and negative 14, it actually works. And so we have zero. And so we know that our original polynomial equals x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x cubed minus 6x squared plus 15x minus 14. So now we want to try with this reduced, uh, with this quotient polynomial. And again, as long as the negative 1 works, you keep working with negative 1. If we do negative 1, it doesn't work this time. So again, for the sake of time, we're going to skip to uh, our next value of 2. But in practice, I would try negative 1 one more time with the 1's negative 6, 15, negative 14. It wouldn't work. So then I would go on to 2. So I do 2, and so I bring down my 1. 1 times 2 is 2, so on and so on. Yay, it works. So I've got my third and um, 0. So I know my original polynomial equals x plus 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 2 times 1x squared minus 4x plus 7. Yay, I've gotten it down to a quadratic. I can factor a quadratic or I can use quadratic formula. All right, so f of x, like we were saying, is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 1 or x plus 1 squared times x minus 2 times x squared minus 4x plus 7. Now, if we could, we would factor, but let's think. Numbers that multiply to be 7 are 7 and 1 or negative 7 and 1. Neither one of those add up to negative 4. So we're going to have to use quadratic formula. Okay, so a is 1, b is negative 4, c is 7. So x equals negative b, so negative negative 4 is positive 4, plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, so that's going to give us negative 12, um, all over 2a, so that's 2. All right, so now we need to simplify the square root of negative 12. We have a negative under the square root sign, so we're going to bring our i out. 12 is 4 times 3, square root of 4 is 2. The 3 has to stay under the root house, so we have 4 plus or minus 2i, square root of 3 over 2. We split it up into real term and imaginary term. So we get 4 over 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 3 over 2. Well, 4 over 2 reduces to 2. 2i two square root of 3 over 2. The 2's cancel and we have i square root of 3. So 2 plus or minus i square root of 3. Okay, so all of our zeros listed all together 
are negative one, negative one. You don't really have to write both of them, but here they are, just so that you can see, okay, there's that counts for two, and then two, and then two plus i square root of three, and two minus i square root of three, which you can leave as two plus or minus i square root of three. I'm just writing it out like this, so you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five zeros. And that makes sense, because we started off with an x to the fifth function. All right, here's the thing. Complex um, zeros, so ones that have imaginary components, and irrational zeros, always bring a buddy with them. They always bring their conjugate with them. So if you know a plus bi is an imaginary zero of a function, then a minus bi has to. If you know a plus square root of b is a zero, then a minus square root of b has to be one also. Which, you know what, that's going to come out um, pretty naturally because we'll have to use the quadratic formula to get to them and um, just based on the nature of the quadratic formula, that's what will happen. Okay, we're going to use zeros to write a polynomial function. And so we're going to write a polynomial function f of least degree that has rational coefficients, a leading coefficient of 1, and 3 and 2 i's is 0. Now, 3 is just a plain old integer, so it doesn't bring a buddy with it. 2 i is imaginary, and so it brings its conjugate with it. Okay. So since 2i is a 0, negative 2i must be a 0, like I said, because they're complex conjugates. So we know we have to have three zeros, 3, 2i, and negative 2i. So f of x is going to be equal to the product of x minus 3, because 3 is a 0, times x minus 2i, because 2i is a 0, and x minus negative 2i, because that's the conjugate buddy of 2i. So x minus 3 times x minus 2i times x plus 2i. So we're going to multiply those together. Um, if we multiply x minus 2i and x plus 2i first, um, because they are conjugates here, um, or involve conjugates, we've got uh, where the middle terms are going to cancel out. So that's nice. If you FOIL, you get x squared plus 2ix minus 2ix. So those zero out minus 4i squared, which ends up being minus 4 times negative 1, so plus 4. Now we're going to um, FOIL again, and we're going to get x cubed plus 4x minus 3x squared minus 12. So there you go. That is uh, just putting it in um, standard form, where we have decreasing degree of x. We'll have x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 12, and we are done. All right, guys, um, make sure you do your problems to try on your own so that you're ready to go over them when we get to class, and um, then you will be ready to get started on your problem set and be all prepared for your quiz.